right, hi everybody. In this video, we're going to learn how to animate sprites using P5 Play and P5JS. So in this program, I have an animated sprite, and when I cross the middle of the screen, it changes to a different animation, and when I go back to the other side of the screen, it changes back to the original animation. So this one sprite has two different animations. So we'll just see how this works. So make sure that you have the p5play.js uploaded to the web editor and if you go to the index file, make sure you've connected p5play.js in the head section of the index.html file. First I declared a global variable to hold the sprite and now we're using a different function called preload and I'm preloading the sprite animations in the preload function. So why would we use the preload function? What you can do is load material, images, and whatnot in the preload function, and the next function, the setup function, will not run until the preload function is done. So if you're loading a lot of images or animations or whatnot, this is a good place to put it. So I've called one animation called Manimin, and I'm using the command load animation, and then I'm loading the images of that animation. So image is where I have saved the images in that folder. So if you look on my sketch files, image is the folder and I have all these PNG or picture files in this image folder. So this is the folder where the image is stored and the first file is called man001 and then man002 and then man003. If you name them in a numbered sequence, P5 play will play them in order. And then I have another blob anim, and this is for the blob animation. I'm loading that animation. Where is that image? It's in the image folder. And this file name is called blob1.png, blob2.png, and blob3.png. They're all in quotation marks. Okay, and again, they're numbered one, two, three, and that's the order in which they will be played. How do you upload your images for your animation? I would go to sketch files and create a folder and I would call it something like images so you know the images are in there. Make a folder to put all your images in there instead of mixing them all up with your JavaScript file in it. and then click on the arrow beside that folder and just go upload file. You can drag and drop your image files here and there we go. Now it's in there and if you open this folder by hitting this left hand arrow you can see that it's in there. Okay so next we go to the setup function. Setup function I'm just creating a canvas and then I'm creating a sprite and that will be stored in the sprite one variable. The sprite one will be placed at 300 comma 200 and then is 100 pixels wide and 100 pixels in height. And now I'm adding the animations to the sprite. So sprite one, add animation. I'm gonna call it man. And the animation is stored here, man -a -min. man -a -min is where all these images of the animation are stored. A sprite can hold more than one animation and you can change the animations whenever you want. So I'm adding another animation to sprite one. I'm calling this one blob and the pictures are stored in the blob and in variable that I declared in the preload. Okay. So now I've attached these two animations as uh, properties of Sprite 1. Now in the draw function, I set the background and the mouse position becomes the position of the sprite. So I can control the sprite with the mouse. And now I'm just have an if then else statement to check where the sprite is. If the sprite is on the left hand side of the screen, I'm taking the width of the screen and dividing it by two. And if it's less than that, then it's going to show the blob animation. I'm telling the animation to use whatever name I put it in quotation mark. Use the change animation method here. Else, if it's not that, that means it must be on the right hand side. The X value must be more than half of the screen. Wait, so in that case, I'm going using the change animation method again. And uh, instead, I'm going to give it the man animation. The man animation uses the man in these photos and the blob animation uses these photos. And that's it. So it'll change animations depending on where the sprite is located. And you could change animations under any circumstances, right? It could hit an object or whatever. And don't forget to draw the sprites every time the draw function is called so we can see the sprites on the screen. And that's how you can animate sprites using P5 Play and P5JS.